een wilde computer. Oh, mooi. Dat is een hele toekomst. Silvio LaRusso. Silvio LaRusso beschrijft zichzelf als een designer without qualities, an artist without a gallery and a writer without a spellchecker. Um, graphic designer Silvio LaRusso onderzoekt wat de relatie tussen technologie en samenleving betekent voor de artistieke praktijk. En vanavond vertelt hij over hoe technologische en sociale transformaties de waarden van designers en de organisatie van freelance werk beïnvloeden. En hij zoomt in op de online mogelijkheden om artistiek werk te creëren. Uh, om artistiek niet alleen te creëren, maar ook te vinden en te ondersteunen. En hij gaat zijn talk baseren op een 5 dollar biljet, als ik het goed heb. Silvio, over to English again. The floor is yours. Shut it down. Ah no, yeah, it works. I hope it doesn't. Hold on. Yeah. Uh. Like a violinist. Which is a bit what I will talk about. Um, is it close enough? Yeah. Well. <laughs> Humans are still needed. Yes, for me they do. Thanks. <laughs> thanks. I think it it should be fine. Uh, well, thanks. Uh, thanks a lot for the invitation, uh, for the introduction, for you for being here, of course. Um, as Katarina was saying, like. Uh, uh, what will be, uh, let's say, the metaphor through which I'm going to present is the $5 bills. Um, why is that? Well, um, there is, I'm really fascinated by this, um, this website that, uh, at least in 2010, was uh, quite an obscure one. Uh, and would present itself by saying that it's the place, as you can read here, the place for people to share things that they are willing to do for $5. Um, and you would find weird stuff, like, for example, uh, c creating an avatar movie portrait. So you can see it here. Or, like, uh, uh, make you look like Borat for $5. So it felt a bit like, uh, um, like a social experiment, let's say, using the web. So now, fast forward of uh, 10 years, and we get that this website, uh, Fiverr.com, is now, like, the biggest online marketplace for freelancers in the world. Is among uh, the 100 most popular website visited in the US and like similar in, uh, in the world, and has basically offices everywhere. And finally, it manages a lot of transactions. So it's, it's really like it became really central. So I would like to discuss a bit how this uh, happened. So this is now the, um, the, the homepage of the, of the website. You see, like, how much, of course, the style has changed. I mean, as it happened with, uh, with Google. Uh, and the, 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 the motto that now has in, uh, in, as a front line is a very pragmatic one. Oh, don't just dream, do. And we will get a bit back into this uh, pragmatism <coughs> that characterizes Fiverr. So uh, it presents itself to be like the, uh, the, the place, the marketplace for the lean entrepreneur. And this uh, notion of leanness, uh, uh, I think it's a particularly interesting one. So what do we find right now? Uh, if we go these days on the website. So you will find some people that uh, would design like uh, two logos in six hours, maybe using some automated um, software, you don't know. Uh, you would find like uh, someone who wants to teach you how to play Fortnite or uh, becoming your personal coach. Um, you would find someone who would counsel you about like your marriage. <coughs> As well as like more like awkward stuff like uh, uh, having Jesus saying uh, something you want. So uh, clearly you understand that at least in these uh, uh, in this latest example you have like this dose of micro entertainment, uh, this uh, pranks, uh, uh, passion, this candid camera feeling, which is a bit in a way like the chat roulette feeling of uh, having someone that you don't know like speaking to you. No. Um, so how does it work? Very simply. Uh, a seller, like one of the of these people we saw, like publishes a gig, like a, a little job. A buyer buys this gig, 
and Fiverr takes like 20% of the money made. So uh, one dollar every five, every five. Um, of course, like the, the sellers are sort of organized through a system of uh, um, quality, let's say. Uh, and you have like badges that you have, like having some good reviews and stuff. And next to that, there is also like the, 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 the fancy, the top notch uh, uh, version of the platforms that uh, selects like fancy professionals. And uh, so you, you are sure that you will get a better job. So it creates like this, uh, uh, this hierarchy of quality, no? So who is behind this website? Um, the, uh, it, the website was uh, founded by two people, but I'm going to focus for a matter of time more on like uh, Misha Kaufman. Uh, why? Because it's a bit more like the agit prop of the website. He, he releases more uh, like many interviews, while the other founder, Shai Bininger, is a bit like shy. Uh, mm. So uh, it's, uh, it's interesting to see a bit like the story of this uh, Misha Kaufman, because he was a bit, uh, he was a lawyer. And his first startup was developed, uh, was created with, uh, uh, with another partner, um, like uh, far, uh, far, in, far, uh, far distant in the world. And they never met from the beginning to the end of like this, uh, uh, this adventure together. They never met. So it already was in his mindset, this idea of like, uh, 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 let's say, a distant, uh, distributed, remote work. Um, so, what was the inspiration for Fiverr? So, there are like there were two, two trends at the time when they were like two trends that still define like the current uh, <coughs> uh, market uh, the, the la uh, market labor. So, the increase of freelance autonomous work we read it now um, every day on the news that uh, freelance work is the future of work, and at the same time the increase of uh, unemployment. So, the combination of these two was the inspiration of, for Fiverr. In the context was Tel Aviv, uh, which considered itself a bit like Berlin or San Francisco as a startup hub within a nation, Israel, that um, promotes itself as a startup nation, a bit like France, so now with, uh, with Macron speaking of uh, France as a startup, uh, startup nation. So as soon as the website was launched, uh, it got like a lot of press. Uh, from and everybody was focused on this uh, five dollars and uh, uh, use uh, like considering uh, again like a bit of a, a awkward angle uh, a spot in the internet. So uh, now the question comes forward. So wh why five dollars? What was the <coughs> idea behind this uh, uh, this this uh, this amount of money? So the, the idea that made like somehow Fiverr special was this idea of productivizing services. So tr basically, transforming services that a freelancer would give into products. Um, products in the sense that uh, you would buy them without having to negotiate, without having to uh, pay for hours. You would buy uh, like the, 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 the labor of a freelancer, and you would still would, as uh, you would buy um, like something on eBay. Uh, and of course, like the five dollars were like a smart move because it's uh, enough money to uh, not to feel like you're spending too much. So you would try. Uh, on the side of the freelancer, this means like that uh, if you are smart enough, and this is a bit the narrative of Fiverr, um, you would slice your talent into five dollar bits. So you would, uh, um, yeah, uh, basically subdivide your performances. You would get uh, immediate payment, and also there was this idea of an actual syntax, an actual grammar um, that defines somehow like Fiverr still nowadays. So I will for X dollars. So it's a bit like a programming recipe somehow. And this is what makes different uh, Fiverr different from like other marketplaces where you sort of negotiate your uh, performance. So uh, this was the big statement that Kaufman did. So turning the labor market you know, into an e-commerce business. And of course, like, this brings a lot of reflection on uh, uh, what, what it means to transform like, uh, labor that is somehow uncertain in terms of time into products. And maybe something we can discuss. At the same time, uh, a new narrative was emerging. And uh, Kaufman would start, would start to uh, speak of uh, the users of his platform as micro-entrepreneurs. Um, and of course, like pushing a positive uh, narrative around those <laughs> micro entrepreneurs, as you can see a bit in this uh, uh, in this picture, which I, I don't know, like 
kind of entrepreneurship is. Um, so, um, a godsend. So, uh, w when I started to do this uh, research, like uh, when I started to be fascinated with it, I wanted to speak with some of the sellers. And I decided to focus, uh, f first idea was to go with, uh, with graphic designers because it's like, um, I, I can have, um, like I'm related to that. But in the end, I, I opted for translator because like they have a very clear metric uh, uh, in, in their work, which is like the number of words to translate. So I decided to um, ask a few Italian translators what, the, what they think about Fav. Uh, so I changed the name here, but uh, you would find a very diverse kind of crowd. So for example, Fabio, uh, uh, 18 years she is, um, she's unhappy on certain things because like uh, uh, there are like some choices in the platform that are not like uh, described to her uh, in advance. And you have like this uh, downgrading, upgrading, which uh, she cannot control, right? And this, this is what like was like touching for me, that she speaks uh, about Fiverr as a godsend uh, in the sense that uh, she uh, is forced to work from home uh, and for, uh, for translator in Italy, this would be like, it's basically suicide. So without such a, such a remote work, they would starve. That's her opinion. So um, after doing this, I said, okay, I want to see more on the, from the side of the, of, the, of the buyer. So I decided to, um, to, to commission a gig, to buy a gig. And I chose like an Italo-Australian uh, translator. So the, the thing that struck to me in this choice was to see that uh, uh, from the app on your phone, you could see when the seller was active in Australia with the, her local time. And you would have like this big countdown with the deadline, no? Uh, showing that like in, uh, like a bit with Amazon Prime, I would say, no? Uh, and this was the email that I got um, from uh, as soon as I paid for the, uh, for the gig. So you are now officially a doer. And that was ironic to me because like what made me, or, uh, what made me a doer was exactly like to delegate a job to someone else. Uh, which speaks, uh, I'm gonna focus more on this delegation. So uh, as you see, like the demographics are like very, very variable. So not only young people, uh, Fiverr itself speaks of uh, 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 50 plus people uh, going more and more on the platform. You can imagine with the uh, work situation in the US, how this is, uh, uh, is going. And also uh, what is interesting to describe is this idea of mu multifaceted activity, that you're not just like a graphic designer, you're not just a translator, you are many things. Um, and I would define this uh, sort of um, uh, trying new jobs, new Possible, new jobs possibility, a form of A-B testing. I don't know if you are uh, interested in UX <laughs> design, but uh, in UX design you have often this concept in which for a single web page uh, you try two different versions and uh, thanks to a form of measurement you, you choose the best one, you now more clicks and stuff. I think that on Fiverr you get like a similar logic of like testing possible careers. Uh, and if you get like requests, you would go for that. So that's why I speak of uh, professional A-B testing. To put it in a more dramatic way, uh, I would uh, speak of uh, creative self-destruction. Le let me explain. Uh, so uh, the, the notion of creative destruction comes from an economist, a Viennese economist called uh, Joseph Schumpeter. And by this he meant that uh, economy doesn't, be, doesn't uh, uh, progress uh, and society don't, don't progress uh, based on optimization of uh, bettering uh, certain industries, certain products, but really by destructing one another. And so out of the ruins, new products emerge, new services, like, you know, this is the process of innovation. So on Fiverr and on other platforms, we see this process, but applied to the single worker, no? So that's why I would call it creative self-destruction. Self so there is an interesting relationship also in terms of like uh, performance art. We see how much like uh, the gig work is, is intrinsically performative. So we saw already some weird gigs. I'm gonna show a few other ones. So uh, this is a, a sort of um, old man <coughs> Steve, this user is quite extremely popular. And what he does is what you read here. He will uh, tell you happy birthday, uh, birthday speaking with a banana. But there are other more like uh, uh, complex and um, sensitive cases. Uh, you might know this blogger, 
uh, this YouTuber, is uh, PewDie PewDiePie. Um, basically, he tried Fiverr in a, in a vlog on YouTube, and um, he commissioned a gig to these uh, two Indian uh, guys, which, uh, whose gig is basically to make a dance in front of a, uh, in front of a you know, like a, a sort of tropical scenario. The, th the thing is that he commissioned them like a gig, the, uh, like a message that was like clearly anti-Semitic. Uh, and now I didn't put it for obvious reason. And this was a mess. He was kicked out from, uh, uh, from YouTube, I think, and they were kicked out from Fiverr. Uh, and you can see even in this image how much problems there are in terms of like sight and value extraction and exotic look of bodies and scenarios. Um, another case which speaks about this performativity as well is this uh, uh, young Singa Singaporean uh, teenager who um, ended up working for Trump and making the slides for Trump. This of course is ironic in some ways because all the campaign of Trump was based on the idea of bringing back jobs in the US. Um, yeah. Uh, so she was like, uh, and she did this to pay her uh, for her, uh, how you call it? The, the, the Brace. Braces, for their braces, yeah. Um, well, so this is also a lot of the global economy of, uh, uh, of this, this type of job. Um, so uh, the, the feature I want to stress is this, like this notion of performativity. And uh, if we want to call it in another way, we can call it virtuosism. And by this I mean like the, uh, the combination of, uh, of a performance with the, uh, with the actual body, like this, this uh, connection. And this performativity in the work on, uh, very often uh, on Fiverr comes to the fore and defines somehow very often like the work of, uh, uh, within the creative industries. The very fact that I'm speaking here is like a confirmation of this. So uh, what is the position of Fiverr in relationship to buyers and sellers? So, so uh, where does it stand? So on one side, you see that Fiverr would uh, uh, provide like those tools to uh, help freelancers to improve their, uh, their position. But at the same time, it would advertise uh, things like this on, on Facebook. Like, why would you pay 100 euro logo? Come to... Uh, come to Fiverr and uh, you would pay less. So you can see how it also denigrates professions. People were, of course, like graphic design were really angry about this, as you can imagine. But uh, th then the question becomes, is there an actual difference between buyers and sellers? You might find that many, many buyers and many sellers <coughs> do the, the, both the jobs because they outsource other tasks to other sellers. So you create this pyramidal scheme somehow in which, of course, like the, uh, the, 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 the entity that extracts more value is the platform. Ideology. Um, I don't use this word lightly, but you will see why, why I'm speaking of this. You might have seen this. Uh, has anyone seen this online? No? This, this is an advertisement by, by Fiverr. This caused a lot, of, uh, uh, a lot of shock and anger. You can imagine why. You see, it's like basically a celebration of, uh, uh, of like uh, work ethic, or I would say even martyrdom. No, you eat coffee for lunch, you don't sleep, uh, you <coughs> might be a doer. This is what doer means. And you see also the picture, which is quite interesting. It was shot by Platon, a photographer who shot also uh, portraits of Obama or Putin. Uh, and it reminds a bit like some Calvin Klein advertisement, no? So the whole campaign uh, of Fiverr that brought Fiverr like re really far in terms of like being known uh, was also characterized by this uh, blunt tone based on the fact that you have to act. And this is a good example. <coughs> so uh, don't dream, just do. Uh, so the, 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 the uh, company, like the agency that created this, literally speaks of ideology instead of a concept. Uh, and the, the, this ideology uh, has like a tension between like this lean entrepreneur and the bureaucratic elite. So when you speak of like bureaucratic elite, you would expect uh, speaking of old uh, grumpy, gr grumpy men like in, in power, for example, but they have completely a different idea. The bureaucratic elite is like the, 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 the Elon Musk, uh, the, the, the entrepreneur who would speak uh, at a TED talk that would speak air. And while the lean entrepreneur 
is like the, uh, the, the very pragmatic one who doesn't uh, think too much, uh, but he, he or she uh, goes on and on and uh, achieve like uh, uh, all the things that uh, they have on their to-do list. And you see that is like the whole campaign is a sort of self-help. Uh, Chris Lane, which is like, as you can see, global head of digital, I write these things down because I never remember, um, uh, speaks of, of Fiverr as a sort of, uh, of this campaign as a sort of, yeah, self-help uh, uh, measurement to ask people to get out, to work, to uh, uh, bootstrap, to, yeah, be, be like uh, active, uh, active uh, uh, actors, agents of their own life. So I would I speak uh, about like uh, re referring a bit, mirroring these um, ideas to the uh, current political turmoil. Um, I would sp speak of entrepreneurial populism because basically you have a uh, we the people against like this elite made of like uh, fancy entrepreneurs that don't get anything done. Um, and, but this is not only the thing that characterizes the, 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 the narrative of, of, um, uh, of Fiverr. You have also this uh, celebration of global nomadism. So, for example, Kaufman, again, writing about, uh, uh, about gig economy, would uh, suggest that uh, having a mobile phone in your pocket is enough to have, uh, to have an office. It's like you don't need an office anymore if you have a mobile. Um, so, I think we are getting to the end. I hope so, because like, I have all four minutes, I guess, now. Um, so uh, I want to speak a bit of, about this notion of delegation. So this is a meme that uh, Fiverr itself like, uh, posted on Instagram, if I remember well. So you can see how much like, uh, uh, in the Fiverr mindset, uh, which of course is not only Fiverr, but is uh, a bit of a mindset that more and more is defining like, uh, our life, Outsource, like delegation is what characterizes work. So, uh, art becomes art production, art direction. And for example, this guy uh, doesn't, uh, can, can't afford like a, a house or like his own apartment or his studio, so he has to outsource all of employees. Uh, another interesting, uh, I don't know if you watch Silicon Valley, the show. Uh, so in this scene, you don't see it very well here, but um, the protagonists are the only ones who are doing like uh, uh, grocery shopping for themselves. Uh, all the others are doing grocery shop, uh, shopping for like uh, as a gig economy uh, work for other people. So uh, I, I would frame like this, this a bit provocatively, like this shift that uh, involves technology in this way. So three revolutions, let's call it. So the personal computer gave access to tools, no? Uh, a bit like the tools that only a typographer would have. The web gave this access to distribution and publishing channels. You could speak for with all the world, it is all the connected world. And finally, you have like the gig economy, still in progress revolution, as a form of access, a global access to the pool of uh, to the global pool of labor. But so why why uh, like people delegate at least in the global north? You might say that it's laziness that uh, uh, is a, a way to, to to become more productive and entrepreneurial. But you might say that it's also a matter of busyness. So for example, this is a service by Amazon. Uh, it's called Amazon Key. So in the spot, you see like this, uh, the, uh, this, uh, this uh, young woman that uh, uh, since it's too busy to go and clean her house and uh, get a package, uh, she uses this service that basically allows you to open the door. Um, so you see how much the logic of control and surveillance, because she can see what's happening, is really dr uh, driven by busyness, by the fact that many people are too busy then to wash their own dishes, as we were saying a bit before. Um, to conclude, um, I think like uh, there is this. Uh, it's good to frame like the work on on Fiverr according to this notion of a friend of Michael Sebastian, a German artist, um, which is the, the notion of survival creativity. Uh, he defines survival creativity as like this ne necessity of coming up with whatever idea it takes to survive in a competitive field. So in reinventing yourself, no, in some way or another. So to conclude, let's see how how much this is connected to uh, how Mich uh, Misha Kaufman sees like the value of innovation. So um, he is extremely fascinated by like the Great Depression in the 30s in the U.S., where like uh, um, 
like the, 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 the generalized crisis would force people to come up with, uh, uh, with innovative thinking, like desperate time for innovative thinking. So we might ask here if uh, we really want to push for like uh, desperate times in order to have innovation or we can have like less innovation and less desperate times. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Silvia. So, yep. um, maybe your first question about yourself. I wrote an, I read an interesting quote. Um, do you describe yourself as a designer? Or did it become more like a function? Did it turn into a function? Because I think you, uh, I wrote an essay, uh, read an essay somewhere that your creative work mutated into more cognitive work, like thinking work. Yes, uh, well, um, I think um, even for like the most lucky designers, the ones that have like the chances to work for cultural institution and things like that, uh, this degree of like this, this uh, uh, threshold between like what is creative and what is cognitive is very, is very subtle. For example, many designers I know that they do like very authorial work. At the same time, they often have the client that ask for a very, uh, very mechanical uh, kind of uh, uh, graphic design operation. So when you become basically, to use an expression, like a sort of uh, uh, voice controlled mouse, uh, so in this sense, I see like this process of uh, cognitivization of creative labor, where like what was clearly like creative, also because of the, its manual dimension, uh, very often for many people, uh, the, the one we see on Fiverr, for example, is just like a matter of uh, uh, automatic and uh, mechanical reproduction. So mm -hmm. that's uh, and what I see myself is that of, no, nobody is uh, is somehow. Uh, totally, totally uh, far from it. Like everyone, uh, everyone now and then has to uh, deal with this sort of uh, uh, this cognitive work, even by like answering email quickly in a, in a sort of this uh, an, an unconscious mode. You now, when you have to be quick, so mm -hmm. this hyperemployment, to use a term of a philosopher. Yeah, yeah. But so, do you mean that actual the actual labor, as in the almost manual labor of being a designer, is devaluated? That you have to upgrade yourself to become more of a thinker, or? Um well, uh, let's say the, the the dream for many designers would be uh, it's not to uh, renounce to manual labor. It's just. Uh, uh, ne not necessarily have to uh, do like uh, only automatic uh, tasks, semi-automatic tasks, for example, laying out uh, a book without thinking. And that dimension is very hardly avoided. And more and more we see that for global, uh, for global uh, dynamics, economic dynamics, that, that logic is more and more coming to the fore because like there is a big supply of people who can actually do that. So mm -hmm. uh, it's very hard to maintain that, uh, that role, probably and, impossible. And uh, like, let's say a platform as Fiverr actually stimulates this kind of automatic work, working within a template, quick work. It brings it to the fore. Mm -hmm. It brings it to the fore and radicalizes it in a sort of uh, uh, global, uh, global dimension, because even within the boundaries, uh, uh, of a country, you would have like this uh, sort of competition. It's very often, to, it's very common to hear people to say, okay, the, the work you do as a graphic designer, also my nephew could do. So it's just like this uh, global nephew. Let's say. <laughs> yes, yes, but you're, uh, yeah, so this is actually quite a pessimistic, pessimistic view on how we perceive, for example, creative work. Is there, is it, yeah. Could we say that there is a devaluation, maybe not in, like, let's say, uh, I hope not artists, but let's say creative work, um, as I think a lot of the people here also do, for example, in design. Do you see, yeah, is this a pessimistic view on that? Uh, oof. I don't know. I don't know if there is like optimism or pes pe pessimism. I think I just like described. Uh, as this platform work, as a lens to uh, understand, at least for me, uh, what uh, work is nowadays and what it can be in the near future. So I think if those logics mm -hmm. uh, uh, exacerbate, uh, like this can describe like the work uh, 
uh, uh, the, the work for many, many people like very soon. Uh, so I'm not sure if this is a neg necessarily a negative thing. I think also that uh, something useful is like not to see the work through the work itself, but more on uh, uh, the broader, like where is the creativity happening? Not necessarily in the work itself. Uh, it's like, it's, uh, as we discussed, like it's very hard to shift, like to split this uh, creative moment to uncreative one. Only that the economic system is able, not always able to capitalize on creativity. Sometimes it's only able to capitalize on uh, uh, on like mechanical work. So many, mm -hmm. many work, many jobs uh, are just like, could, could be replaced and uh, yeah, people don't find value in that. Yeah, I must say that it's hard for me not to see this negatively. I see almost like a new ship full of doer slaves and working for no money from their bedrooms or their, or their mom's houses. But maybe I see this too dark. Maybe this is... Well, I see those people, like I, 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 I hang out with those people. So <laughs> I am like, you know. But your example was Clara, and she, you said, uh, could you explain it a little bit more? Like yeah. Clara, the translator who said it's actually a lifesaver for me. What did you mean by that? Well, uh, if she's forced, uh, not, not for me, for her, if she's forced to work from home. But why is she forced to work from home? Ah, she didn't say. Okay. I didn't want to, uh, probably she has kids. Okay, but it's not because of Fiverr, it's because of some kind of situation. No, it's she... the opposite. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's Fiverr, it's like a uh, godsend exactly because like uh, she can still work from home remotely. So okay. that's a bit like the way. She... But you see, there is a lot of ambiguity. Mm -hmm. um, they are, uh, the three people I asked of, like they are happy, uh, even with some doubts of this platform. So I wouldn't say necessarily it's uh, like full black the vision mm -hmm. of the of this uh, development it's also where they go and like also how people would um, somehow fight to have like good conditions like on the platform you mean on the um, platform. yes yeah, yeah, to yeah. have good rates on many platforms this is happening yeah yeah are there any questions from the audience before we go to oh there is somebody sneaking by it. oh yes Helene. This person, um, you have a tekening aan het verzamelen van wieden voor in jullie beeldessay voor straks. Ja, dus dat is uh, allemaal met een doel. Jullie hebben ook iets speciaals gebruikt te willen. Kan jij ook even vertellen wat jullie plan is? Uh, ja, we. Oh, ja, jullie zijn al. We, we dachten, um, zoals bij de robots, doen we niet het werk zelf, maar we zijn uh, een heel crappy website gebruikend maken om uh, het ontwerp te doen. Dus um, ja, we hebben voor alle sprekers ook een heel mooi logo laten maken door die site. Um, en ja, je kan zien, dat is echt heel, heel mooi. Voor 5 dollar. Of gratis, Willem. Voor 5 dollar per logo. Nee, nee, het was, uh, het was gratis website zelf, ja. Het is heel leuk, je kunt kiezen welke stijl en... Uh, Ja, dat is echt heel mooi. Ja. Dus Willem uh, Kissenbeek, jij doet het samen met uh, Noortje de Laie. Zijn jullie beneden, met een Rezo-printer zijn jullie... Uh, een jullie... beetje aan het vechten tegen de tijd. Oké, okay, ik Want hoor het. Ik kan ook heel moeilijk uh, volgen, omdat de wifi heel slecht is. Dus moet je zo... Ja, ja, ja. Goed. Maar het komt goed. Ja, dankjewel. Ja, yeah, I uh, had just an important question. Did you work yourself with the platform? Mm -hmm. Because I missed it. No, I didn't. I didn't. For some reason? Uh, just, um, I mean, like, of course, th there was the plan. There is a bit of issues, like, to subscribe and, uh, but, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I think it's a very fair question. It's an important one. Uh, and I probably should, yeah. Because, yeah, as it's, of course, it's a matter of, of research, for your research subject in a way. But I was wondering, because I personally didn't know about the platform. Yeah. How does the audience, do, do they know this platform and, or did they ever work with this platform or kind of platforms? So just a question I had. Is someone with Fiverr No, I had another question. But uh, can I, uh, while the microphone, uh, allow me to say something uh, about also this choice of not working there. Because like, very often uh, artists, designers, researchers like would, uh, would uh, just like work there 
for like one gig or two and say, I know everything about it. Or at least like they would feel like a free con good conscience. So I, I prefer also like to see people who actually work there and not to somehow hard, like semi pretend that uh, uh, I was part of my professional background. So that's also a bit of the reason. Mm -hmm. so yes. Yeah, I had another question because you said that it, it's known worldwide, but I was wondering because the incomes are also really different. So people who are used to a lower income are more popular on it because they ask less, or how can I? See that, you know what I'm trying to... Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, I, I have the feeling, like, it's, it's something hard to, to understand, like, how the, the economics work, of course, because you only have, like, the, 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 the surface. And yeah. the feeling is that uh, uh, for many jobs, like, there is no um, sort of uh, uh, adjustment to, uh, to local economies. So you would be paid the same amount of money, um, either, like, uh, in UK, or in, uh, in uh, Spain, or in Greece, or uh, whatever. Uh, so th that is like basically uh, one of the big problems I see, that because like, basically it's an unfair competition uh, in terms of like, what you can ask. But this idea of productivizing services sort of hides this, because you never see uh, the actual income of someone, you just see the product. So, okay. But yeah, it's a worrying, uh, it's a worrying dimension. It's, uh, mm -hmm. it's what is happening with commodities, but applied to, to yeah, labor. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, I actually know someone that is producing this kind of platform in Belgium, oh. um, and she's working on the social bonds, like from the producers and from the clients. And what really amuses me in your talk is the way that you were in contact with these people, and that. Like that this social contact was like a, a, a present for you almost. And then, yeah, or maybe it brings me back to the first speaker that, that told us, and I, I thought it was very interesting, that it's not the act of working that's a problem, but it's the context for who are you working and why are you working. And so I wonder, or I, I notice already, that this contact with the one who's producing for you is already present in the platform, and it's apparently very important also for, yeah, or is it, isn't it, or, or like this fact that you could chat, like, uh, um. what did it mean? Well, I have the, I mean, like, the, the people I interviewed, uh, I didn't uh, commission anything. I just, like, spoke to them, because you have this chance, you know, uh, through the chat to simply ask information, because maybe you want to ask them. My feeling is that uh, when it goes, like, to an actual um, commercial relationship, uh, beside, like, uh, uh, you know, it's a bit like, it's the, my feeling is a bit like on TripAdvisor. You know, or um, uh, what's, uh, what's his name? Uh, Airbnb, where like there is like, mm -hmm. some protocol that uh, is respected. But for example, Clara, it's an interesting case because like she has continuity. Now I didn't put it in the slide, but many clients go back to the, to her to work with her. So she she built a, a crowd. But then you ask her why you still would you still uh, do it through the platform and not like free yourself from it. But still, like the the platform provides convenience yeah. uh, and. Yeah. Okay. I hope I answered. Thanks yes. for your Thank you. Maybe we shall have a look at the reader. You can, you can actually have a seat because we will continue for the bigger conversation with them. Yeah, yeah. Or <coughs> no more. Yeah, yeah, I was uh, mistaken with the Dutch <laughs> <laughs> sleeping hand. The office desk in the pocket. In the pocket, yeah. Then that? The thing you said about the sellers being the same as the buyers and the pyramid scheme, and I was thinking about CMA student buying something from himself or something. <laughs> Here, but I think it's not, you cannot read it. It's somebody who uh, sells.